Hello there and welcome back, my friends out there. We are continuing our discussion about neutrality today. And we're on lesson number 17 of A Course in Miracles. I'm so glad you're here joining us, doing this study together. Let's just jump in. So lesson number 17, I see no neutral things. The idea is another step in the direction of identifying cause and effect as it really operates in the world. You see no neutral things because you have no neutral thoughts. It is always the thought that comes first, despite the temptation to believe that it is the other way around. This is not the way the world thinks, but you must learn that it is the way you think. If it were not so, perception would have no cause and would itself be the cause of reality. In view of its highly variable nature, this is hardly likely. In applying today's idea, say to yourself with eyes open, I see no neutral things because I have no neutral thoughts. Then look about you, resting your glance on each thing you note long enough to say, I do not see a neutral phone because my thoughts about phones are not neutral. For example, you might say, I do not see a neutral wall because my thoughts about walls are not neutral. I do not see a neutral body because my thoughts about bodies are not neutral. As usual, it is essential to make no distinctions between what you believe to be animate or inanimate, pleasant or unpleasant. Regardless of what you may believe, you do not see anything that is really alive or really joyous. That is because you are unaware as yet of any thought that is really true and therefore really happy. Three or four specific practice periods are recommended and no less than three are required for maximum benefit, even if you experience resistance. However, if you do, the length of the practice period may be reduced to less than the minute or so that is otherwise recommended. And that is lesson 17. I just want to highlight a couple of things in here that are a little triggering for me. Um, first of all, thinking that the, the object that we're looking at came before our perception of it. Um, we, we, we are so passive in our in our nature, the way our mind works. And if, if what everything The Course in Miracles is telling us is true, and we are creating the world that we see, um, we're, the way that we're raised is to be completely passive, as if we're just experiencing something that's already there. And so um, that, that made me feel a little bit of a moment of tension or a moment of resistance. You know, because it feels like I'm looking at this camera, this phone sitting in front of me, um, not realizing that at some level I've created this and that when it goes on to say at the end here, um, regardless of what you may believe, you do not see anything that is really alive or really joyous. So what do I see and why am I creating not alive and not joyous things to see you know and then the other piece i've been reading the text and it's it's really kind of um settling into my mind are these ideas about our sight and what we perceive is <laughs> it, it talks about something called spiritual sight so what we see with the body's eyes is not truly what is there and you have the inner altar which is the true perception of reality. So it's like everything that has to do with the body is what the mind is telling it to do, even the things that we see with the body's eyes. So of course, what comes into question for me is um, nature and you know the, the beauty of the animals in their natural state and things like that. Um, are, you know, I still don't quite understand how I'm creating that and um, what 
makes it neutral versus alive and joyous. So that's something that I, I think is just coming up for me and it's giving me a little bit of tension. And I think it's a good thing because it means I'm really opening myself and surrendering to the power of these lessons. I know, and this is a lesson that'll come later, I don't know what I don't know. I don't know what anything is for. So whatever's going on in my mind and that little bit of tension that I'm feeling and resistance to this lesson that I'm feeling is good because otherwise I would just be passively experiencing everything and, and never questioning it all, never thinking that I'm the creator of my suffering or my very, you know, according to Jesus, my low level of aliveness and low level of joyousness in my life. So I'm ready for the full-on ecstatic blissful experience of what it's like to be in that highest vibration possible that highest frequency possible and the more that we do the lessons the more that we depend on the material that we're reading particularly in the text it really helps the lessons um, just come into your being in a deeper way so I see no neutral things. Another humdinger of a lesson from Jesus. <laughs> Enjoy it today and uh, I'll see you back here again tomorrow.